wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a somewhat unusual star system known as SVS-13. A star system that's basically a binary star system that seems to possess not one, not two, but three protoplanetary disks. Disks similar to what you see right here, that are most likely going to be creating their own planets sometime in the next few million or possibly several million years. But the fact that this star system seems to have three such disks is something we've never actually seen before. And so let's discuss this unusual star system in a little bit more detail and find out what the scientists have learned about it in the last 30 years. But I guess let's start with the basic premise. Most star systems out there are not single stars, they're usually at least binary, and in some cases even have three, four, or five stars. And so trying to find out more about how planets form around these star systems can actually help us understand a little bit more about, first of all, our own solar system, or its uniqueness, and more importantly, help us figure out if these binary systems that seem to be also all over the place can form planets similar to our own Earth. Or, I guess, if they end up producing planets that are just extremely different from anything we have in the solar system. But also, generally speaking, when it comes to multiple star systems, because of the gravitational interactions between the stars, more often than not, at least according to our simulations, they'll actually end up destroying each other's planetary disks. In other words, for certain stars, especially ones that are really close to each other, it's generally difficult to form permanent planets. And the more stars there are in a star system, the more unlikely that there are going to be permanent planets with permanent orbits. But, obviously, there are always exceptions to the rule, and in some cases, stars that really sort of break our expectations and present us with something we've never seen before. And that is precisely what sort of happened with this paper that you can find in the description below. And in this case, the scientists were investigating one of the stars you see in this image right here, known as SVS-13. Although, this star is really interesting for a lot of different reasons. First of all, what you're actually seeing right here is also sometimes referred to as the HH objects, also known as the Herbic Haru objects. Some of the older videos uh, explore this topic in more detail, but even by itself, it's a super interesting phenomenon. It's actually slightly easier to see around a slightly different star. Normally, it looks kind of like this. And this usually happens around any young star that's still really active and produces these very powerful jets emitted from both sides of the star, similar to a typical astrophysical jet we detect around black holes. Now, as these jets emanate from the star at relatively high speeds, they will occasionally collide, producing the arches that you see in this image right here. These arches are formed as the jets collide with various types of gas present in the molecular cloud. Today, scientists even have actual videos produced over a period of several years, showing us how these jets turn into these HH objects. And similarly here, the star known as SVS-13 emits these very powerful jets that are not as visible here, and these jets end up producing the HH objects that you see in this region. Which means that this is a relatively young star system, but it's also a relatively active star system. But there are more things that make this star system unusual. It's also what's known as the radio binary. It's a star system where only one of the stars is visible in the optical light, but the other one is just very dim, and so it's only detectable in radio light. Which basically means that it took quite a while for the scientists to realize that this is a binary system. Here's actually one of the most recent pictures taken in radio light, showing us what the system sort of looks like. All of this is located in a molecular cloud known as the Perseus Molecular Cloud, and the star itself is at a distance of about 980 light years away from us. The cloud itself sort of looks like this, and in this case we're only interested in one region. The star forming region known as NGC 1333. All of this, by the way, is technically visible if you have a powerful enough telescope. And by zooming into this region with a typical telescope, you would actually see something like this. This is normally referred to as a reflection nebula. And one of these stars is SVS-13, with a total mass of both stars being roughly equivalent to our own Sun, meaning that one of the stars is just a little bit over the half of the mass, and the other one is a little bit less than half of the mass. And both of these stars have an orbit around one another at a relatively far away distance of approximately 90 AU, 90 astronomical units. And so the fact that these stars are not really that massive and the fact that their orbit around one another 
at a relatively far away distance is most likely the main reason why both of these stars ended up eventually producing protoplanetary disks. In other words, normally because of the gravitational interaction between these two stars, we would probably not really see anything major around either of the star. But in this case, a thorough analysis of both of the stars revealed relatively large and somewhat already well-developed disks. The larger one here is about 12 astronomical units away from the center, the smaller one is approximately 9 AU. But both of them also have quite a lot of gas extending from the center at a distance of roughly around 30 astronomical units. Which by the way is already quite impressive because it just makes it slightly smaller than the solar system. In this case it's two star systems very similar to our own. But I guess the strangest part of the star system starts to become visible once you zoom out and once you start looking around. And that's because all of this sort of resembles a smiley face. There seems to be a third very large protoplanetary disk around both of the stars. And in this case it seems to extend to a distance of about 500 astronomical units. With the disk itself, as you can see from this image, possessing a lot of mass. And that's of course something that we haven't really seen before. Now obviously scientists have previously seen unusual star systems with unusual disks, with quite a lot of features including inclination, including unusual shapes and potentially planets forming in very strange orbits, and also a lot of other interaction and a lot of other emissions coming from the multi-star systems. Including star systems where the disk is not actually a disk but more of a pretzel, but that's of course something that can usually be explained through the orbits and orbital interactions of binary stars. Here the disks seem to be very unique. First of all they seem to be interacting with one another or even feeding one another. You can clearly see how the larger outside disk seems to be providing some of the materials for both the disk around this star but also to some extent the disk around the other star. Which means that there is first of all material exchange happening between the disks, but this can also lead to the disks then causing more planets to form or potentially feed the planets through a lot of different feedback mechanisms. On top of this, because this is an active young star with active jets, at least one other study has already established that these types of activities from these jets can actually lead to what the scientists refer to as ashfall, in this case star ashfall. It can actually create a kind of a feedback mechanism where a lot of the material that falls back into a protoplanetary disk ends up interacting with the disk itself and ends up causing more planets to form and potentially feed the planets, allowing them to grow larger and to acquire more material. The study about this is as always in the description below. So the combination of the ash fall from the activity of one of these stars, along with the fact that the disks seem to be interacting and feeding one another, at least in theory, might actually result in the production of a lot of different relatively massive planets. But very likely not the same types of planets. For example, it's also been recently discovered that one of the stars seems to be slightly more developed and slightly older, or at least it seems to have grown much faster. It means that its disk is also more developed and it might already start producing certain types of planets. Whereas the other star is slightly younger, which might result in the production of slightly different star systems or planetary systems around each of these stars. For example, one of them might possess more terrestrial planets, the other one might possess more ice giants and gas giants. And obviously the outer disk itself will also result in some really unusual planets eventually as well. And so even though normally a multi-star system would not actually be beneficial for planetary growth, in this case it seems to be almost the opposite. The presence of multiple disks along with the activity from the star might actually encourage more planets to form. But there is actually more. This is from a slightly older study from 2018 that has also discovered some really complex molecules already present in the star system of SVS-13. Specifically, five organic molecules have been discovered somewhere in the disks, suggesting of course that if one day these objects do form some kind of a planetary system somewhere, there's a really really high chance that organic life might in theory evolve around these planets. Which once again makes SVS-13 one of the more unique, more intriguing and more unusual star systems we've discovered to date. A baby star system that has quite a lot of potential to not just create various types of planets, but to create planets that have a lot of materials needed for complex organic life. 
Although obviously it will take thousands and thousands of years before we see even the first signs of any of the planets forming here. These are still baby planets and it takes a really long time for them to get going. And by then, for all we know, maybe something else happens to the star system and maybe it ends up losing these planets for one reason or another. Either way though, by studying these very exciting binary star systems and by learning how planets form in these systems, we actually are going to learn so much more both about our own planet and our own solar system, but also about other potential terrestrial planets that could one day be discovered to host life somewhere out there. But I guess until we discover something else, we'll first of all check out the previous video about the HH objects that sort of describes how all of this works and why this is important, but also some of the previous videos about other unusual star systems as well. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.